Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. This is episode three of my Times of the Gentiles playlist. So we've already covered all the scriptures having to do with the Times of the Gentiles. We saw what Brigham Young had to say. He talked about the fact that Jerusalem will not be redeemed by our preaching. It's going to be done by God himself. And uh, specifically, as we see later on, it's going to be as a result of Christ coming to the Jews at the second coming. But in this video, we're going to go over what Joseph Fielding Smith said, and we're going to look at Messianic Judaism. All right, so first we're going to start in Doctrines of Salvation, Volume 1. Uh, this is by Joseph Fielding Smith, page 103. Ancient Covenants Renewed. The Jews continued possessing the land of Palestine until after the days of Christ. Then, because of their wickedness and the fact that they had risen up against the Son of God, they too were scattered among the nations of the earth and became a hiss and a byword, and were so and were so to remain until the Lord says the time of the Gentiles shall be fulfilled. Now the Jews are being gathered again, because the times of the Gentiles are coming to their close. The Lord, through his prophets before Israel was completely scattered, spoke of our day. He spoke of the covenants and how in these latter times he would renew these covenants upon Israel after Israel had been gathered. Okay, now we're going to skip over to Doctrines of Salvation, Volume 3, uh, under a section called Gospel Acceptance Before Second Coming. Okay, because what we're trying to get at is... How is this prophecy going to be fulfilled? What's it going to look like? Is it going to happen before the second coming, after the second coming? Uh, just what is this all about? Are we, are we still waiting on something to happen uh, in regards to this prophecy before the second coming can happen? You know, can we say, no, the second coming is not going to happen because the times of the Gentiles have not been fulfilled? All right. So gospel acceptance before second coming. Times of Gentiles to be fulfilled. We go unto them with the message of peace, of truth, of eternal salvation, calling upon them to repent of their sins and enter into the true fold where they may receive rest. When they will not do this, but to the contrary will listen to the unrighteous and condemn the truth, then God will withdraw the gospel from among them. In that day, the times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled and the gospel will be carried to the Jews. For this, for this gospel must be preached to them as well as to the Gentile nations, and a remnant of the Jews will gather as they are gathering since the dedication of their land for their return in Palestine, and as a remnant of Ephraim and his fellows are now gathering to the land of Zion. Jews to be convened at second coming. The Jews in due time will be established in their own land, and the Lord will come according to his promise unto his people in the hour of their distress, and will deliver them from their enemies. Then will they look upon him and discover his wounds, and shall say, What are these wounds in thy hands? And he shall answer them, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Then will they fall down and worship him as their Redeemer, the Son of God. After that they will be cleansed of their sins and shall receive the gospel. So right here he's talking about the fact that the gospel going to the Jews is going to happen when Christ comes to them rather than sometime before. The nations that seek to destroy Jerusalem in that day will the Lord destroy, for he shall be king over all the earth and righteousness shall prevail among the people. Zion shall be established on this continent uh, Jerusalem will be reestablished on the old continent, and wickedness will depart from the earth. For when Christ comes and the righteous with him, the wicked will be as stubble and will be consumed. Therefore, I desire to bear my testimony unto all people and say unto those who raise their hands against this work, See that you do it not, for this is the work of God. He has established it, and when you reject it, you reject him. And after the testimony of the elders will come the testimony of trouble and distress, as the prophets have predicted. Jews to begin to believe before second coming. Not many of the Jews, I take it from my reading of the scriptures, will believe in Christ before he comes. Okay? So this is important. We've just learned that the main event is going to happen when Christ comes himself. And before the second coming, they're going to begin to believe. There's not going to be like all these uh, congregations made up of uh, Jews 
that are now Latter-day Saints, in other words. The Book of Mormon tells us that they shall begin to believe in him. They are now beginning to believe in him. The Jews today look upon Christ as a great rabbi. They have accepted him as one of their great teachers. They have said that he is a Jew of a Jew, the greatest rabbi of them all, as one has stated it. When the gospel was restored in 1830, if a Jew had mentioned the name of Christ in one of the synagogues, he would have been rebuked. Had a rabbi referred to him, the congregation would have arisen and left the building. And so we see the sentiment, the sentiment has changed. Now, I state this on Jewish authority that they are beginning to believe in Christ, and some of them are accepting the gospel. But in the main, they will gather to Jerusalem in their unbelief. The gospel will be preached to them. Some of them will believe. Not all of the Gentiles have believed when the gospel has been proclaimed to them, but the great body of the Jews who are there assembled will not receive Christ as a Redeemer until he comes himself and makes himself manifest unto them. So this goes along really well with what Brigham Young said. He said that Jerusalem is not going to be redeemed as a result of our preaching, uh, as a result of us sending missionaries into the nation state of Israel or to any Jewish communities because Jews are outside of Israel as well. But it's going to be God himself that does this work. Now, in regards to them beginning to believe, uh, there's actually more substance to it than what what Joseph Fielding Smith just said. Okay, if we go to my second coming timeline, you'll see that, (coughs) excuse me, in in 1809, you had the beginning of what's called the Hebrew Christian movement. The London Society for Promoting Christianity Amongst the Jews, approximate beginning of the Hebrew Christian movement, which, by the way, was just 11 years before the first vision. If we go to the Wikipedia article for Hebrew Christian movement, uh, we can learn a little bit about that. The Hebrew Christian movement of the 19th and early 20th centuries consisted of Jews who converted to Christianity, but worshipped in congregations separate from denominational churches. In many cases, they retained some Jewish practices and liturgy with the, the addition of readings from the Christian New Testament. The movement was incorporated into the parallel Messianic Jewish movement in the late 1960s. The general missionary movement, this is, a, <coughs> excuse me, this is under precursor movements. The general missionary movement awakening in the Protestant church during the, le- the latter 18th century and the early 19th century mov- motivated many missionaries to proselytize to Jews in a more humane manner. With societies in England, Scotland, and Germany, missionaries went all over Europe and had some success, as Aaron Bernstein uh, noted in in a number of examples. The 19th century saw at least 250,000 Jews converted to Christianity, according to existing records of various societies. So that's a substantial number, 250,000. Beginning in the 19th century, some groups had attempted to create congregations and societies primarily of Jews who had converted to Christianity. The London Society for for Promoting Christianity Amongst the Jews, currently known as Church's Ministry Among Jewish People, was formed in 1809 with the motto, Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Early congregations, the first identifiable congregation made up exclusively of Jews who had converted to Christianity, was established in the United Kingdom in 1813. A group of 41 Jewish Christians established an association called Benny Abraham and started meeting at Jews Chapel in London for prayers Friday night and Sunday morning. In 1885, the first Hebrew Christian church was established in New York. In the 1890s, immigrant Jews who converted to Christianity established the Hope of Israel mission, on New York's Lower East Side while retaining Jewish rites and customs. So if we go back to uh, the timeline, you'll see here in column M, this is how I keep track of uh, long-term events like wars and stuff like this. In this case, the Hebrew Christian movement. So it starts here, 1809, right? You go up a little bit. And then we read about this congregation, the first one that was exclusively made up of Jews in 1813, 
and that was only seven years before the first vision. So it seems that this um, new movement of Jews beginning to believe in Christ happened roughly in parallel with the Restoration and uh, started just a little bit before that, which is really interesting to note. Okay, so that's been going on for a long time. Let's go up. And we just read that sometime in the late 60s, uh, it basically changed or was incorporated into the Messianic Jewish movement. Okay. And so I just put 1960, approximate beginning of Messianic Jewish movement and merging of the Hebrew Christian movement. This was during the time of uh, David O. McKay that this happened. Interesting that we had a prophet named David uh, at that time. Okay, let's learn just a little bit about that before we go back to Joseph Fielding Smith. Messianic Jewish movement is a modernist and syncretic movement of Protestant Christianity that incorporates some elements of Judaism and other Jewish traditions into the Christian movement of evangelism. It emerged in the 1960s and 70s from the earlier Hebrew Christian movement and was most prominently propelled through the nonprofit organization Jews for Jesus, founded in 1973 by Martin Moshe Rosen, an American minister under, under the Conservative Baptist Association. Evangelical Protestants who identify as Messianic Jews adhere to conventional Christian beliefs, including the concept of salvation through faith in Jesus, referred to by the Hebrew language name Yeshua among adherents, as the Jewish Messiah and Savior from sin in the spiritual authority of the Bible, including the Old and New Testaments. Belief in Jesus as a messianic figure and as divine, i.e. the Son of God, is considered by Jews to be one of the most defining distinctions between Judaism and Christianity. Among other evangelical Christian groups, messianic Judaism is usually accepted as a form of Christianity. However, Adherents of Messianic Judaism claim that the movement is instead a form of Judaism. That's kind of interesting, right? It's like they're really sticking to their roots, although they have accepted Christ as the true Messiah. This is really interesting in light of what we're talking about, the times of the Gentiles and the Jews beginning to believe, and how uh, this group is staying separate, or they're wanting to be distinct Uh, I guess, from the rest of Christianity. All right, continuing. In the Hebrew language, they tend to identify themselves with the terms ma'aminim, literally the believers, and yehudim, Jews, in opposition to being identified as Nazarim, or Christians. Jewish organizations inside and outside Israel reject, reject this framing. The Supreme Court of Israel has also rejected this claim, in cases related to the Israeli law of return, and Messianic Judaism is recognized only as a Christian movement in the country. In this context, there's some discourse among scholars as to whether Messianic Judaism should be labeled a Jewish or Christian religious sect, though the typical consensus identifies it as a stream of the Christian religion. From 2003 to 2007, The movement grew from 150 Messianic houses of worship in the United States to as many as 438, with over 100 in Israel. So there is a presence of these Messianic Jews that believe in Christ in Israel and more worldwide. Congregations are often affiliated with larger Messianic organizations or alliances. As of 2012, Messianic population estimates were between 175,000 and 250,000 members in the United States, between 10,000 and 20,000 members in Israel, and an estimated total worldwide membership of 350,000. Okay, so it's not huge, but it is sizable. (coughs) Again, I would, if... I would call this the Jews beginning to believe in Christ in this movement. Um, Let's talk just a little bit more about them, and then we'll move on. Okay, response of Israeli government. 
Messianic Jews are considered eligible for the state of Israel's law of return only if they can also claim Jewish descent. An assistant to one of the two lawyers involved with an April 2008 Supreme Court of Israel case explained to the Jerusalem Post that Messianic Jews who are not Jewish according to Jewish rabbinic law, but but who had sufficient Jewish descent to qualify under the law of return, could claim automatic new immigrant status in citizenship despite being Messianic. The state of Israel grants Aliyah the right of return, or sorry, Aliyah the right of retu- return, and citizens citizenship to Jews and to those with Jewish parents or grandparents who are not considered Jews according to Halakha, which is like it's Jewish law. You know, it's like the Jewish Sharia basically, such as people who have a Jewish father but a non-Jewish mother. The old law had excluded any person who had who has been a Jew and has voluntarily changed his religion and an Israeli Supreme Court decision in 18 or in 1989 had ruled that messianic Judaism constituted another religion however on April 16th 2008 the Supreme Court of Israel ruled in a case brought by a number of messianic Jews with Jewish fathers and grandfathers their applications for aliyah had been rejected on the grounds that they were messianic Jews the argument was made by the applicants that they had never been Jews according to Halakha and were therefore excluded by by the conversion clause. Uh, this argument was upheld in the ruling. The International Religious Freedom Report 2008, <coughs> excuse me, released by the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor in the U.S., stated that discrimination against Messianic Jews in Israel was increasing. Some acts of violence have also occurred. In one incident on March 20th, 2008, a bomb concealed as a Purim gift uh, basket was delivered to the house of a prominent Messianic Jewish family in Ariel in the West Bank, which severely wounded the son. Eventually, Yaakov Teitel was arrested for the attempted, for the attempted murder. This antagonism has led to harassment and some violence, especially in Israel, where there is a large and militant Orthodox community. Several Orthodox organizations, including Yad La'akim and Lehava, are dedicated to rooting out missionary activity in Israel, including the Messianic Jewish congregations. One tactic is to plaster posters asking Israelis to boycott shops where Messianic Jews are owners or employees. Another is to report Messianic Jews to the Interior Ministry, which is charged which is charged with enforcing in Israeli law forbidding proselytizing. In another incident, the mayor of Or Yehuda, a, sur- a suburb of Tel Aviv, held a public book burning of literature passed out to Ethiopian immigrants. He later apologized for the action. On other occasions, Lahava activists attempted to interrupt Messianic Jewish and uh, what to interrupt Messianic Jewish and violently harass the participants. And by the way, you can uh, easily find that if you go anywhere. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube, but I know that I've seen it on X. So um, you you have these Jews that have. Uh, converted to Christianity, but they want to maintain their unique identity as being Jewish, and uh, they're paying the price for it among their fellow Jews. And they're beginning to believe um, their numbers are sizable, although not huge, but it seems like it's, it's been growing pretty well. So that's interesting to think about. Just one last thing. This is under uh, JewsForJesus.org, Messianic Jews in Modern Israel. I wanted to read just a little bit from this. And I don't know that this has a date. Oh, it does. Uh, 2018. Interesting. The first year of President Nelson's presidency. How many Messianic Jews live in Israel? Trying to pinpoint an exact number of Jewish believers in Yeshua poses even more of a challenge. The last professional study was conducted in 1999 by Kai Kajair Hansen and Badil F. Scott. They found that there were nearly 5,000 believers, 
both Jewish and non-Jewish, attending Messianic congregations in the land. While that number has certainly grown in the last two decades, it would be hard to describe that growth as a revival of massive proportions. In the International Religious Freedom Report for 2017, Israel, Golan Heights, West Bank, and Gaza, it says, quote, There is also a community of approximately 20,000 Messianic Jews as reported by the Messianic Jewish community, end quote. These estimated numbers are largely due to the fact that Messianic congregations are often attended by both Jewish and Gentile believers. In fear of retribution from anti-missionaries, congregations don't post an exact number of members. While most Israelis might now be able to tell you that they've met a Messianic Jew, most children from Messianic homes are still probably the only one in his or her school. These statistics show that Messianic Jews still make up only a fraction of a percent of the population, but it is apparent that Messianic Judaism has made huge gains in the awareness of the Israeli public. Okay, so let's go back to um, let's go back to Doctrines of Salvation, Volume Three, and I just want to read that that very first part again: Jews to begin to believe before second coming. Not many of the Jews, I take it for my reading of the scriptures will believe in Christ before he comes. The Book of Mormon tells us that they shall begin to believe in him. They are now beginning to believe in him. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know that Joseph Fielding Smith knew about the Hebrew Christian movement uh, during his time, but he probably would have been pretty excited to find out about it. But let's continue. Uh, where, Lord will, where Lord will find faith at his coming. I can testify that when the Lord will come, he will find faith upon the earth. That faith, however, uh, which he will find shall be limited to a very small portion of the inhabitants of the earth. So he's just talking not just Jews, but just in general. He will not find faith in the nations abroad to any noticeable extent. He will not find faith among the peoples of the earth who have not received the gospel uh, as it has been restored. But there will be Faith among those of the house of Israel who have been gathered out from the nations and who have repented of their sins and received the message that came through the prophet Joseph Smith. So this is all that we're going to read and go through for this one. Um, So essentially, both among Jews and among the rest of the world, there's not going to be very many believers. The Jews are going to begin to believe in Christ, which they already have and they have to a sizable degree. Um, And then it's going to be Christ himself when he comes to the Jews that's going to bring the gospel in mass to the Jews. All right, well, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.